Jesus did not come to destroy the law, that is, God's law. He came to fulfill it, that is, to develop it, to give it its true meaning, and to adapt it to the degree of humankind's advancement. That is why, that in this law may be found the principle of duty to God and one's neighbor, which comprises the basis of his doctrine. On the contrary, as for the laws of Moses per se, Jesus modified them profoundly, either in form or in substance. He constantly combated the abuse of outward practices and erroneous interpretations, and he could not make them undergo a more radical reform than that of reducing them to these words. Love God above all things and your neighbor as yourself. And in stating, this is the whole of the law and the prophets. By these words, heaven and earth shall not pass away before everything is fulfilled up to one single iota. Jesus meant that it would be necessary for God's law to receive its fulfillment, that is, to be practiced all over the earth in all of its purity, with all of its development and all of its consequences. For what good would it have done to have established this law if it were to have remained the privilege of only a few people or even of one sole nation? As children of God, all humans are, without distinction, the object of the same solicitude. Jesus' role, however, was not simply that of a moralistic lawgiver with no other authority than his own word. He came to fulfill the prophecies that had announced this coming. His authority derived from the exceptional nature of his spirit and his divine mission. He came to teach humans that true life is to be found not on the earth, but in the kingdom of heaven, to teach them the way that leads there the means of reconciling themselves to God and to forewarn them regarding the progress of future things for the fulfillment of human destiny. Nonetheless, he did not say everything, and on many points he limited himself to sowing the seed of truths that he himself declared could not yet be comprehended. He spoke of all things, but in terms explicit in varying degrees. In order to understand the hidden meaning of certain words, it would be necessary for new ideas and knowledge to come to provide humans the key, and such ideas could not come before the human mind had acquired a certain degree of maturity. Science would have to contribute strongly toward the emergence and development of these ideas. Therefore, it would be necessary to give science time to progress.